Did you know that if a baby continued to grow at the rate they do in the first year of their life, by the time they reached adulthood, they'd be over nine meters tall? That's twice the height of a double-decker bus. Wow! Amazing people do lots of important jobs inside and outside hospitals that help to keep you safe. But what will happen when we have a go? I feel a bit silly. This is Operation Takeover. Can you guess who today's hero is? Well, I'll give you a clue. You'll have met today's hero when you were as old as this little guy, <laughs> but you won't remember. Did you guess it? Today's hospital hero is head midwife Simon. In the UK, there are 700,000 babies born every year. And luckily for us, there are thousands of midwives who make sure they arrive safely. Before mums go into labour, the natural process when a baby is born, midwives like Simon give special training called antenatal classes. So I want you to imagine you've got a really, really big bum. So one of the things that happens when you go into labour is you get these pains that come across your tummy and your natural instinct would be to tense up. So one of the most important things you can do when you're a woman in labour is be as relaxed as possible. Simon has some top tips on relaxation techniques. Right, I want you to imagine that you're sat on a really sunny beach. Take a really big breath, that's it, and out again. No snoring, Zand. So the next thing I'm going to teach you about is how to get the baby in the best position. So you want it to be head down and its head either to one side or the other side. There are exercises to help with this too. We've seen just how important midwives are for helping women to deliver their babies. But will our time as midwives be as smooth as a baby's bottom? It's time for us to take over as midwives. Your challenge today is you're going to teach an antenatal class to some real pregnant women. We're going to be judged on niceness, relaxation skills and communication. I have been going to antenatal classes because my wife is about to have a baby. Sand, how are you feeling? I'm just wondering if I can use the birthing ball to sort of bounce the babies out. We'll both be trying our best with these three very kind mums-to-be. I hope they know what they've let themselves in for. Simon will be watching our every move. First of all, how nice can we be? Judging from bumps, you're all fairly advanced in pregnancy. Amy, you're the most due, aren't you? Most advanced, yeah. OK. <laughs> He's been really nice. Yes. His eye contact and just his general manner was lovely. Step aside for Grandmaster Nice. Can we start off sitting on the balls? Is that ball approximately OK for you? That's fine, thank you. Lovely. He's given Becky the biggest ball, which is good, cos she's really tall. Very nice, really warm and friendly. OK, time to relax. Taking a really deep breath in through your nose, and out through your mouth, and feel your shoulders going relaxed. That's really good. Really relaxed. I really liked the um, visualising technique that he used, closing my eyes. It was really good. Top that, Zan. What I want you to imagine is that you are on a beach. Maybe you can feel the sand, hear the waves crashing. He's described it really well. The beach and the sea. Touche, Chris. Finally, how's our communication? If the baby is in a back labour position... It's back. Got the baby the wrong way around. Get it right, Chris. He head the other way. <laughs> Is the wrong way around there. Ha! Snap! So, one of the really good things you can do, if you stand up straight, having a straight back with that nice lumbar lordosis, we call it the curve of the back. That was a bit technical. Lumbar schmumba, Chris. Some of the words Chris used were a bit over my head. It's actually quite uh, terrifying to talk to a group of pregnant women who are this pregnant. Um, if you come across a bit nervous, they might not believe what you say. And the pillow between your legs and just slightly tilt it over. I'm getting the mums-to-be to try various positions to help get the baby in the right one for it to be born. Up to you, Chris, but I'm showing them how it should be done. The pillow between your legs is to try and have the pelvis a bit more open, and that allows the baby's head to shift down a bit. Tried more positions ourselves rather than just talking about it would have been maybe a bit more helpful. Thank you very, very much indeed. Good luck. Class dismissed. It's time for the verdict. Simon, how did we do? So, from a relaxation perspective, the women felt relaxed in both of the classes, so you did a good job. So a dead heat for relaxation, really? Niceness. Your mum would be really proud of you both. You're both really, really nice. Oh. Yeah. So it's down to the final category, communication. 
and you were really quite nervous. Okay. And Chris was quite happy to get the women to move around and do stuff. Oh. You tended to talk more about it. Simon, who is the overall winner of today's challenge? Dr. Chris. Oh. You know what, this is the one challenge that I'm happy to lose because it's quite important that you know what you're doing when your wife has a baby soon. If there's one thing we've learned today, it's that midwifery is definitely best left to the professionals. Time to hand our jackets back. Thank you very much. Thank indeed. you. Hi, everyone. Well, since we filmed Operation Ouch, I have had a baby. Look at this. This is Lyra. Ouch, viewers. Meet an ouch baby. All that Lyra does at the moment is eat and sleep and scream and poo in huge quantities, don't you? So she's a bit like her Uncle Zand, really. Oi, cheeky. Zand, we are getting a lot of messages from grown-ups about some of our squeamish bits. Mm. Listen to this one. Dear Dr Chris and Dr Zand, why is your programme so disgusting? My children love it, but I have to watch through my fingers. Please, could you make it less gross? Zond, what have I said about eating in the lab? Um... What are you watching? These are our grossest moments. They're my favourite. I love the gross bits too, but they do make some people feel a bit squeamish. Now, feeling squeamish is a basic and important emotion. There are some things that turn almost everyone's tummies. Maggots, dog poo, dried sick on a pavement, a bogey smeared on the edge of a sink. But did you know that this is something that you learn and it develops as you get older? Babies, for example, aren't squeamish at all. Well, to put this idea to the test, we're going to need a baby. Give me one moment, Chris. Here you go, Chris. One baby. Zand, this is my baby. This is Lyra, your niece. Whatever. And we're going to need some of the most disgusting things we can think of. First up, worms. Here you go. Here's Whoa. some yummy worms. What do you think of that? Look at that. This is not a baby that's disgusted by a worm, is it? Fair enough. Next up, maggots. What this do you is think of really that? disgusting. Look at the move. She's got one in her hand. I mean, that is not a disgusted baby, is it? Right. If worms and maggots don't make you feel squeamish, Lyra, I'm going to pull out all the stops with this next thing. Let's see if Lyra is disgusted by Rose. What do you think of Rose? Lyra seems very, very unbothered by Rose. And she's not bothered by the most disgusting thing of all, Dr Zahn's beard and bogeys. Not disgusted by anything. <laughs> no, he's not Dada. I'm Dada. So all of those things might have made you feel a bit squeamish, but Lyra isn't reacting because she doesn't know how to feel squeamish. It's only as you get older and learn more about the world around you that you start to develop these feelings of squeamishness, usually about the same things that the adults around you don't like. So we're going to put this to the test and see what happens when you are truly grossed out. Thank you, Lyra. I think you're done. It's time to bring on some older guests who are cordially invited to our disgusting dinner. Ready to see some amazing stuff? Yes! We're going to show you where you began. Just don't try anything you see here at home. In this lab, you'll see a very special human organ, but it's not for the squeamish. Today, we're looking at how babies grow. Right, here you go, Chris. You can get a nice close look at my belly button with that. Whoa, I think I've missed something. Why on earth would I or anyone want to look at your belly button? Well, I thought we were looking at how babies grow. Yes, but what's that got to do with your... Ah, hold on. I see where you're going with this. Exactly. Because did you know that your belly button used to be your mouth and your bum? OK, yes, that's true. But we still don't need to look at your belly buttons, on because I've got something much more impressive. Take a look at this. Whoa! That is much more impressive than my belly button because this is a real human placenta and umbilical cord. These amazing organs are what keep a baby alive and able to grow inside its mum. The placenta's job is to absorb oxygen and vital nutrients from the mum's blood and deliver them to the baby via the umbilical cord. As well as this, the umbilical cord also carries waste products, that's wee poo and carbon dioxide, away from the baby 
down the umbilical cord and through the placenta into mum's body for her to get rid of. Now, once you're born, you don't need these anymore, which is why we have these to show you. They've been kindly donated to us by a mum who's given birth to her baby, and she's happy for us to show them to you, which is pretty special. This placenta is absolutely amazing. But, you know, I've always said that there's really only one thing better than a real human placenta, and that is a double human placenta from twins. Wow! This must have been what our placenta looked like when we were inside our mum. Absolutely. This has also kindly been donated by the mum of twins. So what you can see here is two placentas and two umbilical cords. After you're born, the cord gets snipped off, leaving you with your belly button. But until then, this cord is your lifeline. But what does a baby look like when it's actually inside its mum? We're going to show you. Now, what we've got here is a real live baby. Zon, this isn't a baby, this is Amelia, and she's a grown-up. That's true. Thanks very much for coming into the lab, Amelia. Thanks, but Amelia. But actually, inside Amelia is a real live baby. Oh. And ordinarily, of course, we couldn't show you that baby, but we have this ultrasound scanner. So, Amelia, are you having a boy or a girl? A boy. A boy. Amelia, how many weeks pregnant are you? 29 weeks. At this stage, a baby's organs are developed. Just here, what you can see beating is Amelia's baby's heart. Wow, amazing! The white things here are his bones, so that's his backbone. Very clearly, you can see that there. Surrounding the baby, these big black patches are liquid. And that's because the baby's sitting in a thing called the amniotic sac. So it's sitting in a big sack full of fluid that protects it from bumps and from infections. At the moment, his eyes have started to work, his heart and all his organs are working normally. The one massive difference between being inside Amelia and being out in the world is that this little boy is breathing entirely through his umbilical cord, through his belly button. But what we really want to know is what does he look like? So we've been able to do a four scan. 4D scans provide an incredible lifelike image of the baby inside the womb. You can see his eyes, his nose and his little mouth. Amelia, what do you think? It's amazing. He looks like his dad, but with my nose. <sighs> and there's another really nice thing here. He has found another use for his placenta, because as well as giving him all his oxygen and nutrients, he's also using it as a pillow. So I think you've got a very resourceful young man in there. Amelia, thank you so much for letting us meet him. Thanks very much. No problem. We've shown you the incredible organs that keep you alive and enable you to grow before you're born inside your mum. The placenta and the umbilical cord bring nutrients and oxygen and take away waste, everything a baby needs. So the next time you're looking at your belly button, remember, it used to be your mouth and your bum. And personally, I think it makes a rather good nose. <laughs> Since Amelia visited us, she's had a baby boy called Antonio John. Oh, cute! Congratulations, Amelia and Dad Damien. <laughs>